Kia ora and welcome to RISE 2025 International Women's Day celebrations. We're continuing the conversation about gender parity, gender equality, and I'm here in sunny Auckland in New Zealand. It's a beautiful day here and I'm joined by Teresa Tapania Ashton, CEO of Māori Women's Development Inc. and a great friend of mine. So welcome Teresa, kia ora. Kia ora Rachel, wonderful to be here with you. And Teresa's based in Wellington in another part of uh, Aotearoa of New Zealand. What's the weather like, Teresa? Um, it's a little bit windy, uh, but it's still warm. So, you know, nothing to complain about. Excellent, excellent. So we're here to talk about our favourite subject, which is ourselves, women, and we're celebrating everything about um, where we've come to, the history of the women that have brought us here today, uh, the women that are present uh, like like Teresa, who are really making a difference for gender equality, uh, women in business, and really celebrating the women that are coming. And uh, yesterday I got to interview uh, Christina Leaf, a very strong young woman, and uh, Christina works with uh, Teresa. And I know you're getting the benefits of that new generation, Teresa. It's just fantastic. Christina in particular is so energetic. Um, and she just has a fantastic ability to strategize and foresee, you know, amazing opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, she's, in fact, able to go between, you know, any gender or age gap and just just put herself in a, in a direction that where it's good for her and good for her community, and particularly good for her family. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, and I enjoyed that um, that connecting uh, with with Christina yesterday, and she's teaching me things. I tell you, um, so I'm I'm enjoying that reciprocal relationship, you know, and it's it, it's it's different generations and different perspectives. Absolutely, absolutely. They just I don't know they they just um, you know they have no blinkers on. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's really what, what is exciting about it and that she hasn't actually, in this generation, this new generation, don't see the struggles and why should they? Absolutely. Why should they? And, why should they? And really what I got from, from Christina was she only sees the opportunities. Yes. Yes. Amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. So I'm really grateful for you coming on um, to the series. And as I said, uh, the series for me wouldn't have been complete unless you were on it. And the reason is, is that uh, I believe in, in your courage as a leader to take on this coaching journey that you're, you're on with us and really taking your organization in terms of a coaching culture to a different level. And that's why, um, you know, I really, I really appreciate uh, you coming on this series, Teresa. Thank you, Ehoa. So, the first question is, you know, who would you like to acknowledge? Who has inspired you um, to where you are today? And I know it's a big question, but, um, yeah, can you share with us who, who comes to mind when you think of this question? Absolutely. I, I think so many wonderful people have inspired me in so many different ways. But I think that I've always had a very strong maternal um, influence in my, in my life. Um, very strong um, grandmothers on both sides um, and a very strong mother. Mm. You know, and within, within my whakapapa and within, within my life, I've been able to um, meet at quite a young age the key leaders within Māoridom for Wahine who have led this country forward. You know, the likes of Dame Fina Cooper, um, Dame Metasazi, um, and to know that they are within my genes mm -hmm. and my DNA um, is a very exciting thing to, to, to have. Fantastic. And, you know, those... When, when, when you say those, those names to me, I mean, uh, you know, I feel quite emotional because they are the women that, that, that carved the way for, for us to stand where we stand today. They certainly did. And I was fortunate enough to listen to Dame Sylvia Cartwright on International Women's Day. And her immediate introduction was to acknowledge our wahine toa 
our Māori leaders of the past who really paved that way for women mm. in general. Um, and from an Indigenous Māori perspective, you can only be so proud um, because they really ensured that our, our road and our um, journeys can be open and you know and and achievable for us in any way possible absolutely absolutely and those are the facade all the forts um and the pathways that they created for us the space that they created for us so you know i'm forever grateful for your genes and your uh your amazing wahine tour that came through um, and, and it's quite a, a poignant time to be speaking because literally this uh, early this morning, you're going to be heading to the UN, to New York City, to be part of an amazing conversation. Can you share more about that, Therese? Absolutely. So it's part of the CSW60 um, plenary sessions that will be held in New York. And... The great thing is that we will be hearing from different countries, different ethnicities in relation to um, issues that affect women of, of today, of tomorrow. And solution, what I'm looking for are solutions in relation to um, closing those gaps and closing those barriers. And honestly, it's just a, a plethora of great sessions that I know that um, I'm very excited to be able to attend and um, yeah I'm very very excited I I've only just got so excited because just just thinking about the that ability to mix with other indigenous women of like mind is very exciting and so who are you traveling with who, who is that or the group that you're traveling with Absolutely. So we're being hosted by the Ministry of Women's Affairs here in New Zealand. However, um, I am supporting the national president of um, the Māori Women's Welfare League and, uh, and in relation to the League's journey and pathway within the United Nations and this particular forum. Um, and I'll, and then also accompanying us will be other members of the league, uh, include, and we are sitting under the umbrella of the Pacific Watch. So we've registered under the Pacific Watch, and hopefully we'll be able to um, build our own pathway for the league in particular to get their own registration within that forum. Fantastic. What a great intention to go to the UN with. It is. It is. It's, it's very, very cool, yes. And um, I'm pleased that I've already been, due to the wonderful Christina, <laughs> um, selected to participate or asked to participate in one of the sessions um, on empowering women. And, yes, and so I'm, I'm really excited about that because then I can talk about the um, positive strength-based programs that Māori Women's Development provide in order to uplift our women. Yes. Wow, what an opportunity and the possibilities that can come from having those conversations are, in my mind, limitless. Absolutely. Mm, wow. Yeah, very limitless. And so what about Helen Clark? Do you think you'll get a chance to connect with Helen while you're there? Most definitely. Think about me next Tuesday at 4.40 when um, Aoropu is scheduled to meet with Helen. Um, so I just received that email today and I'm really looking forward to that as well. Wow. Because, and, and how lucky are we as a country just to and meet the past president of your country, you know, the, the past um, um, prime minister of your country. Not everyone can say that they can do that. Absolutely. And I think she is an amazing uh, leader. I, I, like you, how lucky I, I felt and privileged to meet her at the end of 2012 in Qatar. And I could have just sat there and listened to her um, all night. 
She has a, such a depth of knowledge. She's, a, she's an analytical, critical thinker. And, um, you know, I have all the respect for, for Helen and what she's achieved. Absolutely. And in her busy schedule, to open it up to Aorau Pū, um, in the context that we're still whānau here in New Zealand. Yes. yes. And that's what we love about our country, is that we can connect on that very personal level. Um, and yeah, it is a whānau family concept. Yes, absolutely. Right. And so the question really is about continuing the conversation. You know, what can we do? How can we be the change in terms of closing the gap on, on gender parity, gender equality, whatever works for you in terms of language? You know, what, what do you think is, from your perspective, is the change that we need to bring? Yeah. I was thinking about, I was really thinking hard about this um, on International Women's Day and thought, gosh, as a mother, am I doing the right thing to um, influence my son to be the most gracious, humble man he could ever be, mm. to ensure that his wahine, whomever that might be, um, is going to be treated with the utmost respect and equal in every right in every way possible um, in his future. So I think that's really talking about our own personal responsibility as mums, mm -hmm. um, as aunties, as grandmothers, as cousins. Um, how are we influencing our, our men to ensure that wahine are just as important in their lives and in their agendas going forward? Mm -hmm. Um, and then secondly, I think it's all about how we prepare to stand up and make a difference. Mm -hmm. um, it's time for all of us to stand up. We are all leaders no matter where we are or what we're doing. So what are we doing to make ourselves responsible for the future of younger women? Absolutely. And that is, you know, it's so timely um, with everything that's happening around technology, the pace of change, you know, a lot of the stuff that's happening um, in terms of education, you know, our uh, rangatahi, our toira, the students, the next generation coming through, you know, what is the future for them and, and what is our role uh, in supporting them to find you know, their way and to support them to do that, not to do it for them or or tell them, but have that, that guiding light that supports them to find what they're looking for. No. Absolutely. Most, most definitely. So what action are we taking? What action are you taking? Yes. What action are you taking? Question to everyone to ask themselves. What action are you taking that supports the next generation, especially our women, but also our men, our boys, to appreciate yeah, each other, to work together, to complement versus compete? Um, Absolutely. Yeah, so that we actually are moving together because we all have qualities that can bring us together. Definitely. Mm. It's really why when we work with our clients in business um, and we really focus on within, within a business, pay to pie if uh, it's, okay, it's okay if the, the man is, you know, the front of that business, but where is your wahine? Mm. What role are they playing? They are just as important in no matter what role they're playing whether it's at home looking after the children, whether it's at home, you know, looking after the house. Um, but more importantly, how can they assist you in your business? Mm. You know, they, they, they must be able to be profiled. Mm. They are, val are just as valuable. Mm. And leadership happens in so many different ways. I know on the marae, you know, yes, we have the leaders up the front of our marae and the pai pai as our, as our women call, call our visitors 
you know, onto our mud eye through karanga. But, you know, I know that there are leaders in the back of the kitchen as well. So oh, absolutely. leaders are everywhere and we all have those tendencies. And, you know, it's about how do we, how do we profile, as you said, in business, um, but also where does it start from at, in the home with our father? Mm. Yeah, definitely. In fact, when you think about the marae, I mean, the pai pai rely on the kitchen and the kitchen rules. Yeah. <laughs> um, I always think about my dad on, in those circumstances because he used to always say to me, well, any man who thinks that they can get away with saying anything on the, their, on the marae without their wife agreeing with them is in trouble. <laughs> One hundred percent agree. Yeah. <laughs> a wise man, your father. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and so, you know, we've been on a journey together, you and I, uh, with another uh, fourteen women uh, through the Rise Twenty Twenty Five Pro, and we will continue. This this Dorpu is tight. We're we're sisters. Um. Yes. So going into uh, the next phase of, you know, your, your coaching, working with, you know, the Sudorpu of, of Hinepreneur, Body Women's Development Inc., Rise 2025 coaches, what's the next thing for, that you have planned for, for, for the coaches? Gosh, uh, <laughs> um, I don't want to scare them off. Might be too soon. <laughs> So much really because for, for in my vision is that they are the key to the success of women in business. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, they will be driving the rise of women having them, you know, sh um, having a positive positive impact on our economic um, contribution to this country. Mm -hmm. And they will be leading the way. Um, it, as with Rise, we're leaders. It's a leading opportunity. And so this is the first for everything that we're doing. Um, one of the key things is that they get as much support as they can to be comfortable as great leaders, which I know that they already are. But I think that the great thing about our sisterhood is that we're all prepared to help each other. Yes. We're, we're all prepared to share. We're all prepared to um, impart knowledge. And we're just all prepared to be there for each other. I think that's one of the main things. But this program and the, and the utilisation of our beautiful wahine, as Captain Epinul's, rise 2025 coaches is just going to be out of this world mm -hmm. it's um already we've got so many inquiries knocking at the door mm -hmm. you know people women throughout the country are already hearing about the possibility of sitting of working with a coach yes. the possibility of starting their business with a coach a, one wahine working with another wahine to help them through their stages of business. Mm. Um, and that's so exciting, Rachel. I, I, I really want to cry just thinking about it. I get very emotional thinking about it. And your vision has is, is always been um, one of supporting, developing other women through the coaching process to, to be in business, to contribute to the economy of, of Aotearoa and in New Zealand, and it's such a it's a, such a powerful vision um, as as was Rise twenty twenty five when we came together. It just was this amazing uh, marriage, almost an an amazing partnership. So it all just came together seamlessly, effortlessly. Um, so you know, I can't thank you enough, and I you know I see these these first this first cohort just shining in, in every way, in their own unique way. And it's such a privilege to be part of that journey. Absolutely. Yes, I, 
I can't wait to get to New York so that I can coach, coach, coach. <laughs> Watch out, everyone. Teresa's in New York and she's ready to coach. Anyone who's ready for coaching. Wow. So all, all I really need, because I know you've got a busy day and I know finally, you know, you're in your preparation mode for, for leaving Aotearoa off into um, off to New York City and you know I just want to wish you safe travels I want to wish um, Māori Women's Welfare League um, an amazing opportunity to showcase what is what is Māori what is what is wahine tour what mana wahine mean to the world and I know you will represent all of us in a way that we will feel proud. We will feel uh, we will feel the aroha uh, from all away, all the way across across the ocean. And so, please pass on you know my regards to Prue and, and Denise and the team that are going with you. And I will be um, thinking of you at four um, when you are meeting with with Helen. And uh, you know all the best, Ewhoa. You know kia kia pai to hiding her. Um, and and I'll be thinking of, of all of you. So thank you for taking your time before you before you travel. I tēnā koe e ho, he mihi nui ki a koe, um, he rangatira koe hoki. Um, no reira, he mihi aroha, uh, mai mātou ki a koe, uh, me noho pai. Kia ora, Teresa. Well, you go off and, and I know that you want to spend some time with your whānau, so uh, have, a, have a lovely afternoon. Make sure you get some rest and, um, yeah, keep coaching. Bye. Kia kite. Kite.